Uh, can you all hear me? Yes. I can't really talk much louder than that, but I'm yelling, so we'll keep at this level. Uh, so first thing I'd like to do is get a feel for the room. How many of you uh, build custom uh, themes or plugins? Good portion of it. Okay. So this talk is geared towards developers, so I try to, you know, try to gear to everybody, but uh, there's going to be codes, so if you're scared of code, this is your chance to leave. Um, <laughs> or learn. So, or learn, I guess. Uh, you're into that. Um, so, main reason I came up with this talk was about four or five months ago, I had a project where I had to uh, pick up my JavaScript framework to add to a WordPress site, and I ended up using React. I'll get into it a little bit. And unfortunately, there weren't as many resources as they are now, so I kind of had to like deep dive. So I couldn't really just find something on YouTube or anything like that. I actually had to like dig into code, read document documentation, and like figure things out myself, which is crazy. Like, normally people will figure things out for you, right? <laughs> 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 I mean, that's not how your mind works. Uh, at least that's, that's the internet I know. Uh, so yeah, so this is kind of more, more so uh, something that I learned on my own, uh, which there are newer resources, but I still think the whole process was more uh, viable to me uh, in the long run. So it's the talks, how to add uh, React to your WordPress theme or plugin. Uh, then about me, I'm a full stack mobile developer. Um, I've worked with my, uh, WordPress for about four or five years. I've done custom themes, custom plugins. I've built some like dynamic, like actual web apps, and uh, I've actually used WordPress as a framework for mobile apps. Um, and there was a conference a couple years ago that they used that whole platform. Um, so I've used WordPress for for a while, which is funny because about four or five years ago, I thought it was just a blocking platform. So I never thought it was going to be an actual tool, a uh, utility um, for me uh, in my career. Uh, so I spent the last three years working at a couple agencies, smaller and bigger. Uh, so I've worked with WordPress and I've also worked without WordPress. Uh, I, my last gig, I just did about uh, the past six months was just on the price level and they didn't use WordPress, it was all closed source. Uh, so I have a pretty wide uh, range of experience working in the tech industry. Currently, I freelance, running my own uh, business, trying to figure out, figure out how all that works and go on from there. And also, as I'm going into the talk, feel free to stop me. Uh, if, it's a, uh, if it's a question that I plan on answering later, I will let you know. Otherwise, I'll try to answer one of your questions. But I'd rather keep this more informal. Um, so, yeah. So, my main objective is to outline different approaches to add React to a WordPress theme. Um, most of these approaches can be applied to other, other frameworks, uh, but I particularly use React, uh, which I'll get into. Uh, how many of you know what React is? Mm -hmm. How many of you use React? Do you use React within WordPress? <clears throat> so I, I want to get a feel for like how are you using React? Like just as like a standalone. Um, yeah, I mean I, I prefer Vue, but sure, mm -hmm. sure. <laughs> so I use Foundation and Angular for one web app, or I use React for another and then a .NET format. Okay. Okay. So, like, in terms of how you're rendering it, but, like, are they like hosted to a different environment? Or yes. Like, so, are essentially two different applications. So, like, decoupled. decoupled. Yes. Okay. The big, the interest for me here is we want to build CMS capabilities, uh, which we can sure. build through the Padme Core, or we can use WordPress. Sure. Okay. So, like, as a heads up, this is, I'm probably going to be further faster in, in talking than my slides, but. I'm going to be outlining more brainless CMS versus headless, because there's enough resources for headless now. Uh, while I was doing this PowerPoint, I found a YouTube video that someone was doing the exact
exact talk I was going to do. So uh, I changed my slides around and going a different. Uh, so anyway, uh, let's get into it. So the motivation, like I said, I actually had to add uh, dynamic functionality to uh, a couple of uh, freelance products I had. And they weren't just front end, like a dynamic widget. They were also in the back end, where one of my friends is a DJ. He has a playlist that he makes on Spotify. I created a plugin for him to sync that into, into WordPress, and then he can dynamically pick which ones he wants to feature. Um, and so to do that, I realized I can't just use my like default JavaScript uh, functionality. I wanted to also uh, use one of the modern JavaScript frameworks. Uh, I ended up, I was split between it because I actually have a background in Angular. I used to run an Angular meetup in Detroit like four years ago because there wasn't actually a local meetup. <laughs> I started it to see, to actually ask a community for help because I had no <laughs> idea what I was doing. But it turned out I ended up leaving the community, so it just, you know, first of all. Um, so that was Angular 1 before they came up with Angular 2. And then after that, I got a job and we weren't using Angular. We had our own custom internal framework. So then, you know, Angular kept progressing to 2, 3, 4, I don't know, is it 5 or 6 now? 6 now. I just have to see it too much. Okay, um, so I knew the, I was uh, trying to decide between React, Vue, and um, React, Vue, and Angular. Uh, I, real, I tried to play with Angular, but there's too many paths of the different versions. Each one has their own like, stable team to support. Um, Vue reminded me of Angular, and that's what concerned me because <laughs> they changed Angular, but I, I can understand why you prefer. Uh, view, especially for like some of the setups that I was going through, if you seem like the path of least resistance. Uh, my main reason for choosing React was career oriented because there's just enough job postings that were looking for React. Um, there's countless of web apps that I can name uh, that use React in their um, instead, and like realistically, I think it'd be easier for me to list web apps that don't. Than what I them to. Um, so that's the main reason. And then on top of that, because I'm a mobile developer, uh, I've been playing with React Native, which is a JavaScript framework uh, from Facebook that lets you build uh, cross platform Android and iOS apps. And it's built off of like fundamentals of React, so it seemed like uh, it would like that. On top of that, I went to work here in the US in uh, 2016. and uh, during their uh, state of the word, uh, they announced uh, a platform called Calypso. So it's an entire new admin experience, which is why right now with WordPress.com, where it's <coughs> built with entire JavaScript, no PHP whatsoever. It's no JS backend, and then it's using React right now. And so they released that with, I think, an eventual goal to replace the current WordPress admin with that, even for the top works, um, there's sort of a debate behind that because uh, it's there's there's some inner workings to it. But ultimately, from that uh, from ultimately from that talk, uh, Matt basically said, "Learn JavaScript deeply," and I really took that uh, uh, to heart because I was already interested in learning JavaScript, and once I saw that that's where WordPress was going, it just Made sense for me. So that's kind of why I got into this. Um, and it became a rabbit hole uh, a few months ago because, again, there weren't many resources. Okay, so there are a couple, a couple ways to add React to a project. There is just adding a CDN, uh, like the, the URL, and adding it in, into your, your site. Um, I don't recommend it uh, unless you really want to prototype or like just get a quick uh, up and running experience. Uh, CDN makes sense, but there are so many tools coming into like modern JavaScript that make your life a lot easier if you use the other two options, which is Facebook has a pretty React app uh, like repository or tool um, on GitHub where you, you pull it down and it 
kind of generates and scaffolds like every everything you need, but it also creates like a development environment that it just makes it quick and easy to not only just start building with, but uh, also they have some tools that when you're ready to put it live, you can just do it from from that experience. So the great React app is probably the easiest way uh, to go. Uh, unfortunately, I'm one of those people that needs to know everything I'm working with, otherwise I can't do anything. I don't work with black boxes, I need to know the ins and outs of it. So that's how Rabbit Hole 1 started, where I was like, okay, well let's just see what's going on. And that led into a lot of a lot of work because, so I would use this Create React app, I would pull it down, I would have, I would walk through some tutorials, and great, now I have a uh, single page application how do I get this into my WordPress site that I already have existed? I looked at like how uh, how it builds the files and what it ultimately produces is some static files. It uh, produces like an index.html, a styles, uh, uh, like CSS file, and JavaScript. Uh, so I said, well, couldn't I just take that and move it into my my WordPress theme or plugin and just like uh, link it to it. I would think so, but there was a lot more complications to it. Um, being that, like every time you change something in the app, it would reproduce a new file, but it would have like some different like uh, numbers to it. Um, and so the management just became difficult, especially because this is it's a freelance project that I was doing on the side of a full time job. So I would update it maybe like every couple weeks, and of course there would be too many updates where I can't remember what I did. So it just became very difficult. So the custom approach, it's very tough to do because you pretty much, if, at least for me, being a PHP developer going into JavaScript, there's a lot of tools I had to learn on top of React. React has some suggested practices with uh, something like a bundler, which uh, is for static files. So Webpack, Babel, and they have their own like, uh, like HTML inside JavaScript syntax. So it wasn't just like learning their library, it's like learning their entire ecosystem, which became very, very tough. Um, today, I'll, I'm going to share the CDN links, but I'm really going to be just talking about the Create React app and how to like just get like a basic uh, setup in, in a game or function. Uh, the custom, I'm, I've excluded, but depending on the timing, I can. Kind of walk through it if there are questions about it because I do have my own little uh, framework that I put together that allows me to add React but without all the other stuff uh, <laughs> that uh, the Create React app comes with because they uh, obviously have their own suggested uh, practices, which still is great for learning. But when you have your custom custom environment, and custom libraries, you need to know how to peel all that stuff out and just add like, the things that you need. Um, and that's what I had to do. Uh, so getting into it. So I was just having a conversation uh, with the gentleman over there about redness versus headless. Does anyone know the difference between these two? No? Okay. Well, these are like new uh, catchy phrases. Um, redness and headless. Headless CMS is probably something you're going to see more consistently now, and I guarantee it. You can pull me to it. You're going to walk out of here, and you're going to see headless CMS catchy. Mostly this. Can you briefly explain the difference between a headless CMS and just a, like a RESTful API? Uh, sure. Uh, kind of. I'm going to try. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, headless CMS uh, kind of relies on rest, RESTful API. Um, they kind of go hand in hand in like, what, what they provide. But so, the headless CMS, like, in terms of WordPress, is uh, so right now, when you have a, Word, a WordPress environment, it's serving an admin experience, and it's also serving the front end, right, like for the public user. Um, with a headless CMS, you, you're basically cutting off the front end, so that you can potentially host it, like we were just discussing, like a decoupled structure, uh, where like I can host my front end, like static files anywhere, and then it consumes uh, from an API. So the headless CMS means the WordPress experience is like for an admin, they can go upload, upload content, uh, but that content is now spit out into a REST 
of like what's going to that experience. So that's what it is. So it's it's really beautiful for decoupled structures, and I'm I'm getting into like implement information architecture. And if you're building cross-platform apps or anything like Internet of Things, where they have a mobile app, or I'm I'm building something with uh, an Amazon Echo, for example, but I'm consuming from the same same API. So how the CMS is beautiful for that because all I all my client has to do is upload it in the same admin experience that they're expecting. But now their their content is everywhere. So there are people who are downloading the skill, listening to the same blog post that they can go read from their phone and like that experience, uh, that structure. And the nice thing is if I ever want to change how I'm using the uh, front, so if I ever want to go to uh, view instead of react, I'm not sure if I will. But <laughs> if, I, if, if, if I ever do, if I ever do, I can. I can change the front end without affecting the back end. Likewise, if I ever want to drop uh, WordPress, because there are other CMS, and there are a lot more other uh, solutions that have less CMS, uh, that are no based that I'm in treat. So if I ever want to drop the WordPress experience and go for another CMS, I can do that, and very uh, without like affecting the front end for the most part. There might be some URLs I have to change or something like that, but minimum, uh, minimum like in, uh, like interference basically. Whereas brainless CMS is probably the typical practice, or at least that's how I was thinking about adding React into my theme or plugin, uh, because that's how I would uh, because I've added like single page uh, single page experiences in my like uh, websites, but it's always like. There's still multi level pages, but there's that one page that is a single page application. Where in that one, it's just a separate page template that includes a JavaScript, and then that's how it renders. So that's how bonus, pretty much seen this. You're relying on WordPress to deliver everything uh, versus the headless, where you have kind of a you have control over both, and they can both be separate. Uh, and so, like I said, I'm probably, I'm, for today's, Attempted demo. I'm not going to do the headless CMS, uh, mostly because there's a lot of resources out there um, that are better than what I can do uh, right now, and also I don't think I have anything set up for it. Uh, that's not the real reason. Uh, but the brainless CMS is mostly because that's originally how how this whole topic came came about for me because there weren't enough resources for it, uh, and so I had to figure it out. And the nice thing with brainless CMS is, if you already have a custom site, you don't have to replace the entire thing with React. You can just add small components of React in like widgets, for example. Uh, so like if you have a blog post and you want to add like the like and count and you want to add more interactions to it, uh, for example, uh, you can do that without not having to like rewrite the entire site, which is nice, especially if you're learning React or framework. It allows you to add smaller components and still learn how to do it rather than rebuilding a site. If you have a large site, refactoring that would be good. Are there any questions? Do you agree with the mention of um, CMSs that use Node? Yeah. Do you have any examples of that? Uh, the one that I know of is Netlify. It's like kind of growing. I've actually met the CEO like in that San Francisco yeah, like conference. It's it's growing. It's actually what's hosting the React documentation and use documentation with their sites. So they're they're all hosting experiences for static sites or static site generators. So that's what uh, Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's another one. Yep. Yeah. That's, that's another one. So there, there's a lot more. And I mean, uh, for my enterprise job, this last six months I had to build my own. So <laughs> don't erase it. But um, it's there are more out there. But those are the, those are the two that I know. But um, the, the thought is the thing with LSMS. So the idea behind it is for one of my clients, they use uh, Facebook pages a lot. So I'm actually in the process of only using WordPress to just keep a log of their data so that they always own their data. But they are actually the uh, admin experience is actually going to be their WordPress, uh, their Facebook page, because they uh, already manage so much of the content, and I just work with Facebook's API and have have the front end sitting somewhere else. So 
So the idea with how the CMS goes back to if I ever want to replace WordPress with another CMS, I can do that and do it very quickly without affecting the front. I didn't have to redesign the page or anything. I just had to change a couple of URLs and that's it. So that's the advantage of the headless. Um, we're not going into that. We're going into the brainless. Uh, and I mean, I highly recommend if you can going towards the headless uh, structure. And that's more assuming if you have a new site, an existing site, probably becomes difficult. Um, so yeah, uh, just to give more of a visual idea. So the brainless, brainless is really yeah, you have a database, you have the WordPress platform, and then you have a mobile app, uh, like a mobile website and website consuming content. Um, and instead, uh, with the headless. Now you have this layer, which is the WordPress CMS is just giving you JSON data, and now you can build whatever client-side app. So it could be mobile, it could be a website, it could be an Amazon Echo Skill, or what have you. And and the nice thing is you can build all those all those experiences without having to affect the back end, like for the most part. Um, so this is just a snippet from uh, React's. Uh, documentation. This is how you would add it from the CDN. Um, you would use this WP and Q script, and you can add add the CDN URL. So they have a development environment and production. Production is just more minimized, uh, faster performing, uh, and the, the development allows you to like actually debug it in, in the browser. Uh, and again, I don't recommend doing this unless you really want to just have a quick sandbox to play around with React. Uh, but even then, you're still better off going with the Create React app for its better experiences. Uh, so to do the Create React app, uh, so it requires Node, uh, which I did install. Uh, but as as web developers, it's probably a good practice to have Node installed if you don't. Uh, there's a lot of packages to take advantage of. So there's two different instructions depending on your Node version and I just had to deal with this earlier uh, this week with uh, using uh, old, like I have a newer version of Node, and so a lot of my packages don't work. So the bottom, bottom example is if you download, if you went uh, home today and downloaded Node, you're probably going to go with the bottom example and the top because that's their new structure. Um, don't really know the difference. Really, a little more syntactical, but I guess it's doing a lot. Cool stuff. Uh, so yeah. Uh, so now I'm going to attempt to demonstrate the brilliant <coughs> in an example, uh, and this is where everything's going to go wrong. Uh, <laughs> and so let's see. This is okay. So what I've done, I can make this bigger. Plus, there we go. <coughs> That, that, it, it's lagging on my side. Uh, can you guys see it? Can you guys see yeah. it? Okay, you guys can see it pretty well. Uh, that's so I put together a, a very, very basic theme structure. So all you need in a WordPress theme is an index.php file and a styles.css file. And in the styles.css file, you really just need this code snippet from uh, like, uh, Codex or developer WordPress.org. And this is this is really the bare minimum. Uh, and then in, in terms of my index.php file, uh, so in a React example, you're going to have some sort of div with an ID, and that's how the React knows how to uh, render its content into a page. And so I've just added just the, uh, basic page uh, template code, very bare, bare bones. And then in my functions file, uh, that. Um, in my functions file, I have the two kind of in queue scripts here. Uh, the first one is um, to load the CSS. So I get the style sheet and then the main CSS. This is what's actually going to be built once I add the create React app experience in here. Um, so all I'm going to have to change is what these things are. 
Uh, and of course, there are better development processes, but this is just to kind of show you like how to just add a few of the default. Was this the stripped down version of the, the create React? Uh, this is this is I'm going to be just going through their actual experience. Okay. Uh, create React app. So their default behaviors, and, and so it's using all their tools, and all their suggestions, all, all their suggestions. But that is really the quickest way to work with React, and also because when you when you spin it spin it up, it out actually do like live reload and all the other cool stuff. So uh, it's a great experience. And for some reason, I I, I always unregister uh, jQuery. That's a different conversation. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go back to my slide. Uh, like I said, they have a different way to do things. So MDX create React app. Um, so I have terminal in here. Uh, I should probably go up and trash. So let's. Uh, Um, so, MPS create that and I call it front. So now that's going to go talk to um, the node uh, package manager, it's like their hosting environment. It's going to install React, it's going to set up all the dependencies I need, set up a good environment for me to go in. Um, and work with. Um, so first, I'm going to go in there. I'm going to just run the development environment so you can see what it does, and then I'm going to show you how, how it gets into the runtime. And I'm running against time, so I'm going to go as quickly as possible. And of course, it's uh, not working as as possible. So I kind of regret deleting it. <laughs> it working, but yeah, um, it gives me a time to get copy. <laughs> In the meanwhile, are, are there any questions that anyone had? The questions that you wanted to get at what, this topic? What's the file structure like? For, um, if you have if you have your WordPress installation and you're doing it with just a little bit of HTML code, so sure. Uh, so I actually have a, another uh, theme for. So this isn't an actual theme, but this. Um, this is a different uh, uh, file structure that I put together. So this is my custom one, where I have my own webpack uh, and of course it's live, so deal with. Um, so so this uh, this allows me to install whatever like modern uh, node packages that I want into it. In terms of file structure, it's really up to you. So what I'm doing here uh, is. So, so this is the root directory of your theme. So, like, if you would go to WP content themes, you would add this into whatever theme uh, you call it. And then, for me, what I'm doing is the create React app is in this front end folder. Um, that way, all the node packages that need to go for front end stay there. Uh, the reason I have a different setup here is because I'm changing how I do the themes, and I want to have everything wrapped into uh, like the Webpack so that I can actually add uh, JavaScript packages and still control them a little bit better. So like that for this, it's it's more so it's because uh, I could also host this somewhere else. So I wanted to keep this root. Whereas this, the create React app is now in this front end folder, uh, and so if I wanted to host it, I'd host that folder somewhere else, mm -hmm. or I host it within it. But I, I mean, I've seen some messy structures too. Uh, so in terms of what what it's got, so these are the these are the uh, files that folders that uh, React Create React app has. Um, and I'm just gonna go over the because I have a minute. Um, so first, I'm gonna just uh, run the build command. So it's gonna it's gonna compile. Uh, oh, yeah. So this is going to compile everything, so I'm just going to go ahead and queue it, and then I'll follow it on the dev and run it anyways too. Of course it's going to take a lot of time, but I have multiple processes running, I think. Uh, so, uh, start. so now, in 
this, this is going to open up, should open up in the browser, uh, and it should just be a default React app, and it's just the development environment. Uh, so as you change anything in the front end folder, you'll see the changes here, and this is the default experience here. So this is the, de the dev environment. And the production, uh, let's see, let's switch. Those two. Yep, okay, so in the production, what happened is this build directory just got built, and so we have some static files that's created and some other files. So I don't recommend this in terms of hosting because you're hosting files that you're not going to actually use because uh, it creates its own index file and some other files. But it creates a set, uh, static directory where it has the CSS and the JavaScript. And so all I'm going to do is change um, the stuff here, which I guess I don't have to change because they cache everything. So that was great. Um, so I use local by Flywheel for my development environment. So I'm going to refresh this and it's going to look the should look at the entire same. Uh, yeah. And so you don't see the logo because the image has to get included. But uh, but here's uh, here's React and now my page template. So if I wanted to structure this into its uh, into another page and I can and that gets me going with um, with React. And so that's the brainless CMS. Uh, any questions? Do we have time for it? Yeah, there's um, 10 minutes for questions. Oh, okay. So, so yeah. I was speaking through because I thought 10 minutes was Yeah, no, okay. yeah, there's 10 minutes for questions. So if people sure. want to see more. Yeah, if you guys have any questions. But this was like bare bone in the sense like I don't have a React app ready to render, but I wanted to show you that that's how you go with structuring it. Um, are the slides available? Uh, yes, they are. Uh, I put it on the, the slide share net thing. Uh, I could probably share them. Okay. We can just tweet it out or something later. Yeah. Hashtag. I'll find yep. it. Yep. I didn't like that. Sure. Um, any other questions? Can we take a quick look at the app.js? The app.js? Okay, sure. Like when it compiles or just the, like the... Yeah, the source. Oh, the source. So the reason why I suggest using the Create React app versus the CDN is with the CDN, you can't write JavaScript like this. And it might look intimidating at first, but uh, the beauty is you can create separate files now in JavaScript, and you can really um, you can really avoid messy code, messy architecture, make it easy to maintain. Um, and so, for example. This is like importing React. It's importing a logo. It's like that's how React's built, built in terms of these components. Uh, and now, if I want to add another one, I don't have, have to add that code here. I can create another file and just include it, uh, which means if someone needed to change that one thing, they go into that one file. Uh, so that's the beauty of using the Create React app, or more of modern, modern structures. Uh, it allows you to work with like. A more uh, single component based structure, which makes it easier to maintain in the long run. Um, so, yeah. and, and so you can see like, with React, it has uh, CSS, they have JavaScript, and what React, the Create React app does is it actually builds out an index.html file out here um, with with the CSS file. And all, all it's doing is it just put everything in one line. It's actually more uh, optimized that way. So this is as performant driven as it gets for a file. Um, same thing with the CSS and JavaScript files are just compiled stuff that don't try to read it. Um, uh, it's not fun. Um, so yeah, that's so that's how that's how I attempt uh, like attempted to add React to my page. Uh, and to do this with a plugin, you would still use the MQ scripts, but you would just only queue them for the admin, and then there, there you go. Now you can add it into your plugin and have a single page like experience inside uh, uh, inside plugin page. Um, 
In terms of file structure, I, the main reason I went into this talk and I went to a couple other talks was because uh, no one really dug into like how to structure those. And when you when you realize like, yeah, that's great, I have to develop now, but how do I go live with it? What do I go live with? That's the question I didn't have an answer for. But now with this, this gives you a better uh, structure of you still upload your theme. Uh, make sure you don't upload your node modules. You will never need them on a live server because they'll just add weight to the server and potentially vulnerabilities. It's kind of like WordPress plugins in that way. Uh, so what you can upload in terms of front end, all you really need is the CSS and the file. So you can either deploy the entire directory or keep it local and only upload those two files. But however you choose to do it, just make sure the path points to the files and you should be good to go. Are there any other questions? Can you bring this big decision video maker Angular or Sure. Um, actually, most of this would probably uh, stay the same. Uh, in terms of in terms of Angular, uh, this is why I ended up having to sort of reverse engineer this uh, because I wanted that custom control, and also because at my my contract game it was enterprise, so we couldn't actually use React, so I had to put my own like JavaScript framework together. Um, and so for that, I still wanted to leverage the modern stuff. Uh, and the way I did that is probably more, more so how I did this. So you, the best way to add Angular to anything or any of the modern JavaScript frameworks is learning a bundler tool. So Webpack, for example, is a, uh, is a suggested tool. And it works really well with uh, React, but there are documentation for Vue and, and uh, Angular. Uh, so just so this one, actually, I don't think. Okay, yeah. So by default, uh, there's some configurations I have in another file that add React to this. But by default, this Webpack config just looks for uh, JavaScript files. Says use Babel, so now you can use the same ES6 stuff that we saw in in the app source over here, um, using like the import functionality. Um, so it, most of this would work, except you would have control over the functionality, like actual the code. Um, so this is just, it looks at the JavaScript, uh, looks for JavaScript files, compiles them, and builds an uh, HTML file for it. So in terms of using, using Angular View, do it kind of go the same way, unless they also have their own, like, you know, pre-view. Uh, app or whatever, then you probably just follow that suggested build. Yeah, when you said that you started this with kind of doing a deep dive into the the, um, the new um, you know, scripting, sure. for you, can you give an estimate of you know how long, <laughs> how, many, how many man hours would you say you had to invest personally to um, to come up to speed to so I started learning React probably like last year, early last year, let's just say April, May-ish. Um, I didn't have any intentions of being using inside WordPress until a project came my, my way. But honestly, I was able to grasp React's concepts in about a weekend. But like I, I watched a couple, of like I, I, uh, I bought some uh, courses off of Udemy. Um, and I, I like that site because they actually constantly update their videos, uh, usually. And so I found some videos, I just followed along with what they were doing. And coincidentally, I had a job interview uh, the following week, and I had to build something very similar, so I already had a code base to work with. So, I mean, it comes down to how much time you have. Like, I spent my entire weekend, you know, like that, that was my Friday night or Saturday night. And, like, I spent, you know, a solid, six hours probably watching the video, doing everything they're doing, and just trying to uh, absorb it. Uh, in terms of in terms of how comfortable I am with this, you know, I'm speaking now and I this stuff like just feels comfortable as I'm speaking now, but like if you asked me like a week ago, I was like, uh, I think I know what I'm doing. I have all these scattered notes everywhere, but like 
you've got to put it into context now. And so it really comes down to how, how much time you have to play around with. And the easiest thing, or the, the best thing to do is make the easier decisions. For me, I was stubborn, and I was making life difficult for me. So again, I went in, and I had to learn everything was doing. Uh, versus just going with a crazy act and focusing on what I needed to build. And if you focus on what you should be doing instead of going into all these rabbit holes, it becomes easier to learn, but unfortunately, I still haven't learned that. Um, no, I agree that any black boxy thing that you don't quite understand will eventually come back and bite you in the ass. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's how WordPress is too. Like, I, didn't, I didn't know anything about WordPress. WordPress was this, this like, uh, crazy mess. I was like, okay, I'm not going to touch anything. I'm not going to touch any of these theme files. And now, you know, like I'm, I'm deep into that. <laughs> uh, so, you know, it, it, it's like for anything, it takes some time, but I think it's a little bit. We're just about out of time for this session, so you guys can have a little bit of time in between, um, get some coffee, and do it what you need to before the next one. But yeah, if any of you guys are at a happy, happy, uh, what is it, happiness okay. or whatever. Uh, if you have any projects that you have questions for, uh, I'll be around there. Um, so feel free to uh, bug me. I'll be walking around.